Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. In recent times, there have been a series of natural disasters in our part of the world. And certain segments of the body of Christ have responded to all this by proclaiming to the world that these are acts of the judgment of God on these people. Others say the opposite. And then there are others that still say it might be God's judgment, but we just don't know for sure. So what is the truth about this matter? This is Set Free with Ken Legg. Hello and welcome to Set Free with pastor and author Ken Legg. And Phil Edwards is my name, along for the ride of what's going to be a very interesting week, I'm sure, talking about all the natural disasters that we've seen and how does that fit with what the Bible says? Is this God's judgment? All very interesting questions. And I love your opening uh, question there, Ken. What is the truth in this matter? Because there's so many different opinions out there. Yeah, well, let's say first up, Phil, that our hearts go out to all those that have been affected by these tragedies. Mm. Uh, I personally know people who suffered in the Queensland floods and in the fires in Victoria and also over in the earthquake in Christchurch. And, uh, you know, we can look at uh, images and statistics on the uh, news and so on. But um, somehow when you know people that have suffered, uh, it really comes home in a much more personal way. But look, you're right in saying that there's just a lack of consensus in the Christian world about how we should be interpreting these events. You know, is this the judgment of God or is it a natural disaster or or, or what is going on? And there are so many voices that just seem to be coming out of the body of Christ at this time. And it reminds me of a verse in the New Testament that says, if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound, who will prepare for battle? Now, I know that that's not the context in which that verse was given, but there is a principle there. If the trumpeter makes an uncertain sound, then the troops won't know what's really happening. And I guess that's where we're at right now. Now, of course, some people do take the, the middle road. In fact, uh, uh, there's someone that has a um, a website that I highly respect, and, and I went onto his website to see what he would make of it, and he actually took the middle ground. He said, well, it may be the judgment of God. It may not be. We just don't know. Now, to me, that's like um, a parent sending a child into his room, you know, and the child says, is it because of something I did? Well, and the parent says, well, it may be. It may not be. You just won't know, you know. I mean, uh, I think if it was the judgment of God, God would spell out very clearly and specifically what it's about. Okay, Ken, what do you, what's your call? How do you explain what's been going on? Well, first of all, I think we need to acknowledge that the Bible does say that as we approach the end of the age, we can expect more of this kind of activity. Uh, in fact, somebody likened it, in fact, I think it was Jesus that likened um, th- this kind of thing to birth pangs. Mm. Um, you know, a, a woman that's expecting a child, as the birth pangs um, kick in, uh, as they go on, the closer it comes to the time of giving birth, uh, uh, there's less space in between each birth pang, and uh, there's more, you know, they're more rapid. And, of course, we're seeing such an upsurge of these things in the world today that um, Jesus said these things are the beginning of sorrows and they are an indicator that the end is getting near. So so there's there's that fact that we need to take in mind. But would you say that it's the judgment of God, the, these events? Not at all. In fact, uh, Jesus, as I say, referred to them as, as the birth pangs of creation. See, we're living in, in, on a fallen planet, a, a planet that... Um, is waiting for the redemption, the same as we are, for the full redemption of Christ's death upon the cross, you know, what what that paid for us, uh, to bring in the total new um, uh, creation in its totality. And so the the creation is kind of um, groaning with us uh, in these things. Well, the Bible uses that that very word, doesn't it? The earth will groan for the return of the the Lord. There's all some words to that effect. Yeah, that's right. Now, I believe that we can reject the view that this is the judgment of God for various reasons. I I believe, in fact, Phil, that um, it fails four different tests. Now, we don't have time to look at all of those today, but we'll look at each one of them as we go through this week. But let me just talk about the first test that I believe that it fails first up, 
and that is what I call the common sense test. Um, for example, let's take the fires down in Victoria. Now, somebody that um, styles themselves as a prophet said that it's because of the pro-abortion laws that were introduced down there. Now, the fact of the matter is that um, Victoria is not the only place that's brought in laws that are, you know, uh, contrary to the standards of the Word of God. Mm, there'd be many that places, are, absolutely, around the world and around Australia. So, if God was to judge one state, He would have to judge us all uh, on that basis. Now, of course, the fact of the matter is that there were many Christians, uh, as well as others, that suffered in those fires that were totally against mm. the laws that were brought in, and yet they suffered. They paid the price. So so it just seems to fail the common sense test. Now, take the, the Queensland floods and the uh, Cyclone Yazi. Um, <laughs> this is a different website I went on now just to, just to say, you know, just to find out exactly what uh, some of the so-called prophets are saying about these things. And uh, one gentleman said that, it's because Kevin Rudd was over in Israel at the time and he urged the Israeli government to sign a non-nuclear treaty and they did not listen to what he says. And so the reasoning goes on that, well, of course, Kevin Rudd is from Queensland. Okay. And so, so therefore, uh, Queensland was flooded and we copped the cyclone well, to me, Phil, that, that kind of gives a whole new meaning on that phrase, God, move, God moves in mysterious ways. <laughs> There's a lot of mystery um, uh, surrounding that kind of explanation. And I guess there are natural explanations to things too, sometimes where we might say it's God's judgment, but when you look at it, it's a different story. In Perth, for example, the bushfires that were started by somebody using an angle grinder on a day that they shouldn't have been. It was a total fire ban because things were tinder dry, and, of course, what is going to happen? A fire. Exactly. And, and of course, you know, Christchurch um, uh, is on the fort line, the earthquake fort line. And, um, you know, we spoke about Queensland and it being a cyclonic, uh, North Queensland being a, a cyclonic uh, zone. Uh, and so these things do happen from time to time. And I think it's um, it's uh, pretty sad when we, we jump in and kind of, you know, say, they, thus is the Lord, it's because of your sins that... Uh, uh, this has happened and, uh, you know, where it's a great opportunity for the church to reach out with the love of God mm. and um, be God's arms outstretched to people that are really suffering at this time. Yeah, I guess we like to point the finger sometimes, but, you know, the, these are the ideas that have been around for quite some time. This kind of theology is not new. The Jews kind of thought that there was a direct connection between suffering and one sin. Now, you might remember that uh, some people came to Jesus and they said, uh, that tower that fell on people in Siloam, is that because they didn't repent? And, and Jesus said, no, <laughs> there's no connection between that tower falling on those people and killing 18 people and their sin. He said, there is a day of judgment coming, and unless you repent, you likewise will be judged at that time. But there was no direct link between uh, that tragedy and the actual sin of those people that perished at that time. And so Jesus basically demolished this theology that every time somebody suffers, it's because of their sin. I mean, that was the theology of Job's comforters. They came to him and said, you're suffering, you must have sinned. There's mm. a direct link between suffering and personal sin. Yeah, Job saw through that and he was consistent in, in him saying, no, God is sovereign and God can do what he likes. And I'm going to stay faithful to him. And that's the challenge for us, I guess, in the, in the middle of all these things, when tragedy strikes in our lives in whatever form, um, that we need to stay faithful to God. Not only that, you know, God did say at that time that he was angry with the counsel of Eliphaz and his friends mm. uh, because God <laughs> is dead set against this kind of theology. I hope this has been helpful. Join us tomorrow as we continue our look at coping with natural disasters. Until then, remember, you don't have to carry that baggage. God wants you to be set free. Find articles and more set free podcasts in the free Vision Christian media app or at vision.org.au. 
Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.